Peace to the saints. Today's topic of critical importance. Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to go ahead and send in your thoughts, questions, comments, because I know you guys have probably been victim of dealing with a single mother, victim of your time, victim losing resources, victim having to deal with that stretched out cat that your kids didn't stretch out. Oh, we're going to talk about it, but we're going to get deep. We're going to talk about the psychological aspects of the single mother. How does she become that way? Why shall she remain in this state? Oh, we're going to talk about it. You did. Confirm that you can still hear a boss. You dig? I'm my own sound engineer. I got to let my employees out every now and then. They got men they got to see. You dig? So we doing this solo dolo out here. Yes, indeed. Firstly, I want to show love to those who show love to me. That's how you should be in all of your relationships. May I first acknowledge Jason Paul, who came in via Cash App. He writes, good to see you, money man. What's the latest? Oh, the latest is that I'm still the greatest like Gretzky. You dig. And life is beautiful. I'm really so thankful right now. I'm around a lot of gorgeous women, a lot of good people, wise men, getting a lot of opportunities coming my way. So it's a verification that my efforts are continuing to pay off. And I feel so thankful. And when I'm with my team, and we're enjoying this opulent lifestyle, I always take a moment uh, for us all to be grateful and, and realize that we're in a rare position and reinvigorate ourselves with the hustle that keeps us here. So life is really good. I'm very thankful. You know, speaking of some of the good people I have the privilege to be around, shout out to my, my good brother, uh, Jabrizi Magic, you dig? He writes, on the plane watching this one, Mile High Club. You dig? Oh, man, did you dip back to the hometown? Let me know. By the way, I might have a play for you um, uh, toward uh, middle to end of next May if you want to uh, run a mission, an international mission, holla at your boy. I think you're going to like this one. Indeedy. Let me um, start from the top. If you've been dealing with a single mother... <laughs> Call 1-800-HELP-A-PLAYER. Uh, Lucifer sends in a super sticker. Appreciate it. The saint is very consistent and prosperous. Shout out to the ballers, you dig? Because real men appreciate, we appreciate seeing people successful, especially when we're associated with them. We can be proud of them rather than envious. That is the mark of a good man, someone who is saintly in nature. I was recently listening to a uh a military guy, and he was talking about his journey of going from being overweight and unimpressive to becoming a top military man. And one thing he had pointed out is that he used to be a hater. He said, you know, when I would look at guys who had the things that I want, I would call them cocky and arrogant. And I realized that it wasn't that they're cocky and arrogant. It was that I was really mad at myself because every time I would see a guy who's in great physical shape and I wasn't, he would like make me feel embarrassed and he would make me feel low about what I'm not doing. So when you see those people winning, they put a spotlight on what you're not doing. So he said, it's not really hate. It was jealousy. It's not really hate. It was actually misplaced love. I would love to be him. That was very insightful. I, I thought I'd share that one with you. Uh, Lucifer then came back two times on him. He said, it was so nice. I did it twice and then did it thrice. I do know a female like that. She's super thick. You heard me from Cincinnati. Craziest. Ooh, she crazy, but so thick. Oh, I guess I got to give a quick story time real quick, and then we're going to go forward. And my, mind you, if I don't say someone's name, you'd be smart not to say their name either. I don't mention other content creators. I don't mention people I don't know uh, in the channel. You dig? So uh, go ahead and pick up a clue. Now I'm teaching you high level game, which is you should be thinking. So you notice if Marquette didn't say, why would you be in the super in the chat section trying to guess it? Now, if you send a super chat and you want that name to be known, fantastic. But otherwise, chill, chill, pay attention. Quick story time. All right. About this little super thick chick in Cincinnati, and then we're going to carry you home. I'm trying to remember how I met the nut job. I can't even remember your boy spit so much game. But anyways, I met this little super thick thing. She lived right outside of Cincinnati. And right off the rip, I could tell there were some mental issues there. 
But she was so thick. I said, let me see what it do every now and then. You say, you know what? I don't want problems, but I got time. So let me go ahead and see what I could do. So I end up uh, smashing her a few times. And I remember the third time I went over there to take her down like a hitman. This was a particularly interesting situation because I'm not really a sex driven person. So, you know, once I once I'm done, I'm done. You heard me like we gonna move on to some other affairs. I'm not trying to do it so long that I'm tired and sleepy. Now nah, I'm trying to you know, you cats like to go to sleep after you get one off. I'm trying to get one off and then get in the shower, get dressed and get back to the hustle. You dig. But uh, in this chick's case, I was going back for a third time. You feel me? She was that thick. And I remember I called her up. I said, hey, I'm pulling up. And she said, okay. I arrived and she was getting in the shower. Now, mind you, I didn't give her much heads up notice because I don't like to give heads up notice. You see, I let them know at the last minute. So I'm the type to start driving toward them or I'll be in their neighborhood like, hey, I'm coming on. I'm five minutes away. Open up. Daddy's home. So anyways, I pull up on the chick and um, she says, well, let me get in the shower. My first thought is like, hmm, shorty, like, uh, did you just come from the gym? If you didn't just come from the gym, I mean, what's going on here? Uh, secondly, don't you feel the need to be clean in general? You know, this is the evening. I found you in the evening. Shouldn't you already be showered and clean? Why do you all of a sudden need to clean up? I, I can't even lie. I'm, I was kind of suspicious. And granted, you know, when you're dealing with three fours, you got to be suspicious. And this white chick, super thick, super thick. And she says, no, I just I literally just put on some spray tan before you came. And so, like, I'll get it all over you and all over my sheets. So I got to shower it off. Now I'm black. Clearly, I don't know exactly how spray tan works. So she could have gotten one over on me. I don't know. So she says she needs to hop in the shower to wash off the spray tan. Me being the kind of guy I am, I said, look, you may be telling 100% of the truth, but I have a 0% tolerance for the downside of you not telling the truth, which is that you just got smashed or that you've been sitting here filthy all day. So uh, that's not uh, that's not going to go down. So you dig. She hopped in the shower. I hopped out the door. But anyways, I just want to share that story to let you know that being thirsty and over consumed with the physical will lead you astray. You have to be able to walk away. That's an important thing in negotiation in general. You got to be able to walk away. Much of life is sales. Much of life is negotiation. I always take life like a businessman, which is why you often hear me relating dating to business, relating money, or excuse me, relating women to business. You dig? Oh, it's a beautiful day today. I'm ready to kick some game. Morpheus writes, why don't you host your meeting with your group on Zoom and save your time and money, LOL? You realize you can do that, right? No common sense. Not sure what uh, the fellow is referring to, but thank you for sending it in. Why don't you host your meeting? I'm not sure which meeting he's referring to. And save your time and money. You realize you can do that, right? No common sense, question mark. Now, you got to love these people. I really do appreciate them. And here's the sad reality about being unintelligent. The unfortunate thing about stupid people is they don't really know that they're stupid. You know, it's like you try to tell them, but they just can't quite grasp it. It's a condition of being stupid. Now, for those of you who are intelligent, you see, one of the challenges of intelligence is that you have to deal with those who are unintelligent. That's the balance to the blessing. You dig. But anyways, Benjamin Franklin reminds us to suffer fools gladly. So this fool who clearly has not enough self-respect to use his name or his photo. Thank you. We appreciate you. Carrying on. Jojo writes, peace to the saints, peace to the saints. Lucifer to came back. He said, yes, we bawling like Spalding. Mr. Cambry sends intuition. The saint is consistent. Error Dim Six writes, much love from Australia. Been on my grind and studying your past videos, especially the Don't Date White Girls Who Like Black Guys video. Patreon member since Feb 2021. Oh, that's a veteran. You dig. Shout out. And you know what? There's a lot of game in that video about avoiding white females who seem to be particularly obsessed with the black male, whether it's the African-American or otherwise. There's some psychological issues going on there. You dig? It's a deep video. Do check it out. Dante comes in with tuition. Peace to the saint. He's very consistent. The man is prosperous. You dig? I see he has the backpack briefcase from manandwomanbrand.com. 
He's living well. He also goes hard in the gym, which I like to see. Absolutely do. Black Ken writes, what if, oh, we didn't went hypothetical. He might be asking for his cousin. All right, we're going to see what he's talking. He says, what if the single mother causing your life strife is your own mother? Well, you know, it gets like that. He writes, I'm ready to cash out on a new car and give her mine so she can leave me be. Well, number one is, do you live with her? And then number two, remember that a good parent wishes for you to be able to live your life. For those men and women who are responsible and honorable, once they have children, they have decided to dedicate a major part of their life to making their children successful so that they may propagate their seed and make their family name powerful. If you're taking care of your mother, that is quite backward. And I do remind young men and young women constantly, especially in consultations, that it is okay to be for yourself. In fact, I encourage it. Three sentence Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. Now, I let's go backwards. Be good to good people. Is your mother a good person? You know, sometimes we assume such just because of the blood relation. It is not always the case for even murderers, pedophiles, criminals have family, their fathers, mothers, their brothers, their sisters. So first off, is your mother a good person? And even if she is a good person, be good to yourself before being good to anyone else. That is the prioritizing that I recommend. Noor writes, peace to the saints. Mitchell, the creator of the Jab Journal, writes, peace to the saints. And that is a fine um, tool for you all who are pursuing success. You can get it at T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. And I really want to encourage you to utilize it. We're going to do a, a video jointly. Uh, it'll perhaps be myself, Marcos, and Mitchell, the three M's, you dig. And we'll be discussing goals and how to use that tool to make sure that your efforts are focused. One of the things I notice a lot with guys who do consultations is that they come in and they have too many things that they're trying to work on. And they're they're a team of one, which is no team at all, but you really don't want to split your energy, your capital, and things like that. You need to keep your eyes on the prize. But you know, a lot of work I do with young men, women, mature men, is to identify what that prize really is for you, not what society told you. Maybe society told you to go to college. Society tells you a lot of things. But the true question is, what is that prize for you? Khalil writes, peace to the saints. Thank you for your insights from our consultation. I know it will propel me forward in my life. Can a fraternity be used to leverage ideas for business or as a think tank for ideas and products? That's ironic. I was just talking about the, the gentleman that I give consultations to, and here one is. Uh, by the way, it's good to hear from you, Khalil. And I was very impressed with this young man. Uh, fraternities, generally speaking, are good uh, social networks, and you'll be able to leverage them over a lifetime for connections. Is it a good think tank for ideas and products? Generally, it is not. There are fraternities that are business specific or industry specific that you can join while in university. Be very thoughtful in selecting a fraternity, but it does really color a university experience. And consider this, when you go back to your university as an alumnus, you really have no home or refuge to return to It's just a campus. Conversely, if you were a part of a fraternity, in my case, I founded a fraternity, when you go back, you have that fraternity house. It's a home. It's a place to welcome you. It's a place to tailgate. It's a uh, something that you are a part of. It's a legacy. So it is certainly uh, a consideration. Dante came back. You dig? Shout out to Rudy. He writes, respect and blessings. I appreciate you and the assassin. Mutual. And that is why... I'm making every effort to be able to increase the information, uh, the frequency of giving out good information. I'm so excited and humbled for this conference that's coming up. It is a magical thing when you get together men of values, men of respect. Rienzi writes, peace to the saints. Shout out Mitchell, a standout individual. Indeed, Mitchell has a lot of hustle. If Mitchell has nothing. The man has a lot of hustle. 
Phyllis writes, you don't know what you're talking about. This advice applies to men in the age groups between 18 and 25. Y'all dudes over that age, but get it. Y'all have whole families hiding them. Oh, Phyllis. That's a little angry, Phyllis. Phyllis. Ricky writes, peace to the Saints props due and MDB 2024. We need somebody in there 2024, you feel me? The Four Pillar Journey writes, peace to the Saints. Keep dropping these jewels, boss. And shout out to the Four Pillar. Actually, I had a consultation with the Saint uh, earlier today. Saint has a YouTube channel. He's talking about all the critical pieces of self-improvement for young men. He's even going to eventually do some bilingual content, which I really admire. And I'd like to do sometime soon when it's appropriate for me. Alexandra writes, peace to the saints. Would you put divorced mothers in the same category? Divorced mothers. Undoubtedly, a single mother who had a child out of wedlock is significantly different from a divorcee. So no, I would not put them in the same category, though we should evaluate them against the same standards, and we should certainly view them with some level of suspicion for someone who has practiced something, they might be good at it. If you've practiced success, you may be good at being successful consistently. If you've practiced failure, you may be good at that. And when I say practice, if you've had a divorce, you got a little bit of practice, and that's a suggestion that you know, maybe you're not good at picking men. Maybe you're not good at judging character. Or maybe you're not getting good at getting along well with others. We don't know. It's something to find out. And certainly it's a situation where a wise male goes in uh, with his antennas up. Undoubtedly, we cannot throw away human beings. So we cannot assume that every woman is 100% unlikely to be worthwhile just because she's a divorcee or a single mother. There is just a probability It is probable that they are not worth a goddamn thing. Thank you for your question. And as you are one of the lady saints and I recognize you and I know that you can handle the truth, uh, I surmise that you may be uh, one of the exceptions to this. Soul for Soul writes, peace to the saints. Marquette, by the way, there's no E at the end of my name and on my middle name, it's D-A-V-O-N. I see one saint spells it uh, incorrectly uh, consistently over the last... uh, one and a half years. (laughs) Uh, And and mind you all, I want you to know that details and the ability to be aware of and to manage details will lead you to success. Being careless will lead you to mediocrity, which is to be average. Soul for Soul writes, I often catch many women with drinks in their hands and when they see me, they do the sucking. Uh Uh-oh. Or I'll be walking down the street and the women pull out their phones. Any thoughts? Well, what do you mean they pull out their phones? Huh. I'd need you to clarify this one when you say they, they do the sucking. Yes, please elaborate, which is, no, don't elaborate. That means add details. Illuminate, which is to clarify, make more clear, make this brighter for me so I can see what you're saying. Rob writes, When a lion takes control of a new herd, the lions kill all the cubs that are not his. Oh, that's vicious. No benefit in investing your resources in another man's lineage. Sounds primitive, but there is great meaning there, Robert. I can't deny that at some level we are an animal, however intelligent. Error Dim 6, right? Saint. What's up with single mothers who want more kids? <laughs> bruh, bruh, you telling me is crazy. And the funny thing is, as I mentioned, people who practice failure, they actually get comfortable with failure. That's the scary part. They're comfortable with underperformance for it is a way of life for them. And here's the blinding thing that you experience with these dim-witted peoples is that because they're around others like them, Birds of a feather flock together. The unintelligent hang out amongst one another. Because they're around other fools, they've convinced themselves that they're doing all right. Or in some strange situations, they convince themselves that they are actually intelligent because they are the smartest fool among the fools. I remember when I realized I wasn't that bright. You see, at my high school, 
which was an underperforming high school in Southern California, primarily black and Mexican. And it was very unimpressive place academically. So I was able to thrive while putting in minimal effort. And it was very, to me, apparent that I was a cut above my peers generally in the way of IQ and you know academic prowess. And it was effortless. I thought I was smart. Then I got into university and I realized, damn, I'm not that smart. It just turns out I grew up in the ghetto and people in the ghetto are generally not that damn bright nor are they well schooled and so i realize that's why it's so important to position yourself and also to have some self-awareness one thing i notice consistently among those who are not successful is they're not self-aware now you can imagine single mothers are extremely unaware and here's the funny thing about single mothers you know i guess it's not unique to them you know people create stories Stories that they tell themselves and stories that they tell you, which generally amount to lies. You know, a woman is lying when she talks about her ex and he's a narcissist or she talks about her ex or why her relationship ended and it ended 100% because of that bad man. He was abusive emotionally, physically. He was a narcissist. He was dishonest. He was a cheater. And they go on this, this rant identifying a litany of all these bad qualities the man had. And it makes you at the end of it say, well, gee, golly, if he was such a bad fella, how'd you end up dating him? Number one. And if he was such a bad guy, how'd you end up pregnant by him? Number two. And then number three, being that you're a low class, unintelligent person. Anyway, why did you end up maintaining and carrying the pregnancy to term? If he was such a bad fella that, you know, you, you can figure that out. And then they're going to start telling you more stories, a.k.a. lies. Stories are explanations we use to make our protect our psyche, make us feel OK about ourselves, even if things are not OK. So then she's going to say, oh, well, I, I didn't know he was pretending he was portraying himself to be this. Well, there's only so many things you can portray, right? The truth is generally apparent. So they have all these lies on why they're in this situation that they're in. It's a lack of self-awareness. It's a lot of dishonesty. He writes, I always ask, quote, as in you want more kids like from another man? You want two baby daddies? Insanity. It's not quite insanity, but it is uncivilized. It is unimpressive. Yes, I would agree. And this is often the case. And let us get a little deeper when we're talking about these single mothers. You know, I like to call them lonely mothers is what they are. These lonely mothers like all human beings, are driven by primitive desire. Primitive, those things that come from our animal nature. And I don't mean animal, we're not animals, let's say our human nature. And so this nature, these are the subconscious driving forces, like the things you don't really have to consciously think of, like eating. You don't have to consciously say, I should be hungry. No, you're going to feel hunger. You're going to feel sexual desire. These are biological forces within you. The biological drive to procreate, you know, that's in all of us. Those who are more rational, intelligent human beings tend to plan things out. You might plan out a marriage, do some family planning. Those who are more primitive, less rational, the lower human beings, they tend to not plan things out. And being driven by that primitive desire to have sex and also the primitive desire to procreate and propagate your species or your lineage, thoughtlessly, they allow that drive to overwhelm their intelligence for they have very little of it, not only in the intellectual capacity, but also of the emotional intelligence variety. So they allow these primitive drives to drive them to procreate and procreate they do. And? Then they see another opportunity with another man. They carry on, not realizing that their life will be difficult and it will involve struggle and their child won't get all of the things that they might want the child to have. But accepting that they are indeed mediocre and being unintelligent, they say, well, we're going to carry on because it's OK. Why is it OK to them? They have low standards. You see, some things are OK to certain people, but other people say, whoa, 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 I couldn't live like that if you paid me. So standards are everything. Single mothers or lonely mothers, they have low standards. 
and you should stay away from them for a variety of reasons, which we shall go into deeper. Tyree writes, a woman wants a man with a future. You ain't lying. A man wants a woman without a past. It is a paradox and a challenge for many a woman. And I may do a video on how at some level, both genders are seeking the perfect spouse, which is not out there. And secondly, how we both, the male and female, tend to be allured by fantasy and pursue the person that is perfect. And it causes a great expense to us and an expense to the other individual whom we're trying to get to behave like we want them to behave rather than accepting who they are. <laughs> Baller writes, don't diss Blair High School. Now, nah, shout out to Blair, you dig? I ended up there on, I guess not on accident. My mom wanted to keep me out of trouble. Yeah, I, I think that was the story. Q Dog 32 writes, peace to the saints, though you should never slay where you get your paper. Me and a young lady went out for a good time and she told me she had a young one. That was our last date. I feel you, bro. And it ain't nothing wrong with going ahead and beating it down while you're there. I mean, if, it, if you there and she there and ain't nothing to do, you might as well go ahead and play hide the salami. Uh, but make sure you strap it up because one thing we can guarantee you about single mothers is that once they got one kid and no baby daddy, like, w what's the risk, right? Like, all they're going to be able to do is double up their welfare check with you. I mean, low key, it's a come up. You heard me? A kid is a check. So you better go ahead and strap it on and roll it all the way back. Alaric writes, preach to the saints. Salute to the boss hall. Would have sent cash out, but they closed it from gambling. I've been struggling with that for a minute, trying to move past this phase of my life. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, number one, I appreciate you being transparent for so many of us lie to ourselves, And the most challenging area of honesty is talking about where we fall short. So you are a great man. And I'm looking forward to you bringing that all the way out. And yes, let us all stay away from vice, which can involve women and, you know, unintelligent choices in our sexual behavior, can involve gambling, can involve uh, consumption of intoxicants. Give me one second, let me just. Now back to these lonely mothers. Lonely mothers. We already went through the underlying forces that drive them to become lonely mothers. Now, here's the funny thing is that when you're dealing with a lonely mother, and let me just be honest with you, maybe this thinking will help you have a greater aversion to lonely mothers. And we all get tempted because sometimes they're attractive, right? Sometimes they're still well-preserved. And the more irresponsible of the lonely mothers, they... They had their kids early, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19. So, you know, they got a kid that's a whole 10 years old and Shorty's still 27 and she looked young. You heard me and you over here like, oh, wait, she thick. She got the biddies. So I might have to slide. But here's the thing. Number one, just knowing that there's been a whole baby head that has pushed its way out of that formerly tight orifice, ah, I'm out, I'm out. I find that to be vile and disgusting. And the thing that makes it mostly vile is that it wasn't my kid that ruined the vagina, you dig? Now I can stay with a woman for a lifetime if she's having her body ruined with my kids. And when I say ruined, I'm talking about those stretch marks that going, are going to occur. And no matter what kind of lie you see on the internet, the truth is from medical professionals and science is that there will be stretch marks on the body. There will be vaginal elasticity loss. There will be the appearance of the vagina will change. And even the hormones of the woman will be different. So when you're dealing with a woman whose body has at some level been reduced in quality or appearance, it's okay when it's your woman because you love her for things that are greater than that. But to accept that leftover bucket of slop Nah, not when it's somebody else's kids did it to her body. I can't do it. I might have to see what that mouth do, but may uh, Allah, may Jesus, may the Lord, may God, may everybody save me from them and keep me away from them because low key, I don't even want to be around that energy. I really don't. And there are some women who are right now in the comments saying, Marquette, you're a liar. I have kids. My vagina's just as tight. Impossible.
Impossible. That's not true. And further, here's an example of that not being true. Did you know, gentlemen, just one funny side note, and then we'll get to the serious part. Um, you know, women end up uh, defecating oftentimes when they're giving childbirth. It's unfortunate. It's disgusting. I don't even know why I said that. I should have probably left that out. But more importantly, here's the serious part. Um, during childbirth, sometimes tears occur in the vagina, actual tears, like the skin rips, it bleeds, and the vagina not only became looser, but it was torn. So then it becomes like almost like, not even useful and the doctor has to go back and they call it a husband stitch they stitch the vagina back closed after the rip after the tearing and if the vagina was not altered in nature then you'd never get the tearing if if nature was such that it makes the vagina open just wide enough the baby goes through and then it closes right back to where it was pre-baby that's not true that's like nothing in nature occurs like that there's nothing to where it experiences significant strain and it's mint condition like it never experienced anything no for every action there's an equal or greater reaction is it equal or greater i don't know i'm not a physicist but look you get the point a baby head go through the Pussy's gone. It's all bad. That's the point. Carrying on. I'm just keeping it real out here. And what I'm really doing is helping you program yourself to stay away from these women. That's on the physical side, but it gets deeper. We're going to talk about on the mental side of these single mothers. And we're going to talk about on the support side. We're going to talk about how they're going to deal with you and treat you. Probably the same way they treated that man who's no longer there, which is why he's no longer there. Yoel writes, a decent woman whose feelings I hurt is coming back slowly, randomly like an old message, watching my stories. Should I wait for her to reach back out? How to handle this situation while maintaining a posture of strength? Yo, well, this is a good story. I can tell that you're really playing this intelligently, and I admire that. I can tell the ism is within you, Saint. Thank you for bringing this to me because I, I really actually relish these kinds of situations number one because it is a verification that you sir are a boss you see women come back where there is value let you have gone broke you dig she wouldn't be back let you have experienced some kind of serious challenge oh she wouldn't be back i promise you that so this verifies that you've been winning and what women are really good at is picking a winner and sticking with a winner and sometimes sticking a winner with a baby it's crazy out here but here's the thing so she's coming back subtly you see when she's watching your story that's still fairly anonymous she hasn't been proactive but then if she randomly likes an old message that means that she's really combing through your past interactions and so she's doing something that's proactive to put you on notice that she's noticing you and here's what you do don't be so aggressive to say something back or to invite her back you see, now it's fine if you hurt her feelings, this happens. And this is kind of how guys are. We tend to not be sensitive enough at the right times. We learn though. What you should do is, you know, let's play this game. Like, hey, baby, you want to play this game? Let's play this game. So, you know, you see her showing up again. You go ahead and like one of her photos or like one of her messages. Don't say anything though. Just go ahead and like it and then just, you know, put your hands back and see what she does. Give it a little bit more time. What you're doing is you're going to wait her out and increase her desperation. So what you're doing, you're giving her a little, a little indication. I'm like, yeah, I'm open to you coming back, little bitty bitch. And so give her that olive branch and then put your hands back and make her come back to you. Don't say anything to her because at this point, you are not the hunter. You are the pursued. And that's a playerific position to be in. You dig? It's my favorite. And, you know, so keep this on flip mode. You hear me? Make her come chase a pee down. Yes, indeedy. And by the way, when she comes back, if she comes back thinking about that you're about to be apologizing for your past errors, that's out. No, there will be no apology. Jeremy, you came here to um, to get back with a boss. You know, we just going to pick up right here where it was. And if we learn the lessons from the past, beautiful. But you will not be getting an apology because what you don't want to do is accept this female back into your life. And she's dealing with a situation wherein in her mind she's like okay i'm coming back to him but he still needs to make up for his past errors oh no no nope you're not going to hold anything over me because we ain't we're not about to live in the past we're going to live in the present and prepare for the future love so don't let her try to play that game on you and they often do that and it's more so the the primitive low iq females who want to play that game about you know tit for tat or punishing you and here's the thing never deal with a person that's oriented on punishment and even as a male you should not be oriented on punishment i've had guys ask me more quite how do you punish a female and as a p i'm even telling you like bro like you don't want to live like that you see 
you should always be positive and future focused and focused on good things. You know, punishment's a negative thing. And sometimes people, whether they're, you know, us dealing with women or even parents, you do the wrong thing. You punish because you're angry. That's not punishment. That's you expressing yourself. And don't confuse the two. Punishment should be if someone's done something egregious or more importantly, you should do it when it can be corrective. It can be educational, not just punitive, you see. So I wouldn't really dig deep into punishment, but if you do need some methods on punishment and you know, a PK have a soft pimp hand. So check out on patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. I have a video entitled how to punish a woman. You dig learn a lesson from a pimp link is in the description. Uh, by the way, wishing you well with that saint. Alexandra writes, what do you think of single mothers who don't have the father's support? Would you respect the man who says she quote, didn't need him, end quote, and gave up on it. So I'm wondering if your second sentence, did you mean to write, would you respect the woman who says she didn't need him and gave up on it? I think that's maybe what you meant to write in the second sentence, but regardless, I'm going to address this. Number one, what do I think of single mothers who don't have the father's support? Well, the single mother can't control the father. Similarly, the father can't control the single mother. That's why they're at odds and that's why they're not together in the relationship. So it's only reasonable that we you know, expect that you know, things are not necessarily harmonious between the two of them. So that I understand. If the woman has matured, gained some ism and has educated herself on the proper kind of man and the proper way to live, and this man does not want to live in the proper way or provide for this seed for whatever reason. And maybe because he's utterly disgusted with the female and maybe he, he's not impressed with the kid. He's like, man, you don't look like I thought you would look. You're, you're four inches shorter than I wanted and you got a lazy eye and you're not very bright. I just can't mess with you. Yeah, it gets like that. I mean, you know, it, it's unfortunate to say it aloud, but that is how some individuals think. It just is what it is. So if the father doesn't want to support the child, be it emotionally, financially, with his time or otherwise, and that is what it is. It is a uh, constant. And now we need to deal with the variables, which is to say, okay, we've dealt with that. We must accept reality. Would you respect the woman who says she didn't need him and gave up on it? Oh, she does need him. But the reality is that she can't have him. She needs him him being the father. Oh, she needs him, but she can't have him. So she's dealing with the reality that I can respect. But the arrogant position of like, I don't need no man or I could do this by myself. No, that's stupid. And that's stupid, not only for the female, but also for the male. It would be insane for a man to say, well, I didn't need her. Well, maybe you romantically don't think you need her, but surely your child needs a mother. So I think a woman who is worthy of respect would not necessarily say, I don't need him because it's not about you right now, love. It's about your children. And what you really should be saying is, I would like my child to have his true father, that is his biological father. If his biological father is not able to participate in his life or does not wish to participate in his life, I must move on. And so I am. And I think that's reasonable. And thank you for your question. And Shout out to all the lady saints who have the toughness to hear the truth. And what's more than that, have the intelligence and strength of character to behave based on the truth. So often we hear it, but we don't want to use it. And that goes to the point of the quotation that Mitchell McCauley shared recently on a live. He said that, something to the effect of, you know, average people believe their thoughts, they believe what they think, and they deny what they observe. Wise people believe what they observe and give up on what they thought was real. You dig, which is to say, you know, if you're seeing something to be true in the real world, accept it. Quit trying to make up things in your head to make you feel better. Just trying to catch them on these super chats real quick. And if you sent it in by a cash app or PayPal, we will also address that.
Here we are. The great one writes, peace to the saints. I'm about to graduate college. And may we all congratulate him for that is actually number one. It occurs less than we think. About half of America's college students never graduate. Those who do graduate tend to take too damn long to do it. It's a four-year degree that you generally take more than four years. And more importantly, the graduation experience is setting you up for your future. So may we all wish him much prosperity. He writes, should I take a shawty to go while I'm still in university or is the grass greener outside? Hell nah, bruh. Get them right now. The grass is definitely brown once you get out of college for the most part, especially if that bag ain't right. And nine out of nine, when you get out of college, that bag ain't about to be right. You getting hit with student loans, you got to start repaying and you ain't really earning like that any damn ways. So go ahead and uh, swoop you up a little something right now, especially if you know you and her will be in the same locality following university. Zenaria writes, peace to the saints tuition. Saint, what advice do you have on some women, women's nature that constantly try to find clues that you are cheating? Ooh, Saint, these women are the very worst. And they're the worst because number one, either they're dishonest, meaning, you know, they're projecting, you know, they have not been quite honest with you and they're projecting that onto you. So that's one possibility. Possibility number two is that they're, they've been traumatized. They've not healed. They have scars, whether it was from vicarious experience of observing infidelity in their parents' relationship or dishonesty among their parents, or they experienced the male acting out on male nature and being deceitful with them to do so. So they're basically going to ruin your experience and your relationship and steal away your happiness bit by bit because they're going to keep harassing you with things that are A, made up in their mind, and B, may never occur, and C, things they feel serious about as though it's real when it's really just imagination. In the real world, you're gonna, world, you're gonna have to deal with actual problems. These chicks are manufacturing problems in their mental factory just creating nightmares where there is no necessity to do so. Whereas a woman's actual job on earth is to be the assistant to man, assist you in acquiring more wealth, assist you in greater happiness, not to distract you and slow you down and bother you. The saint writes, can this be a good sign that she is always on her feet? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. In fact, I would sit down with her, lick her dead in her eyes and have a very serious conversation and let her know this cannot continue. And further, know that when a woman says, yes, got it, understood, will follow, that does not mean that they understand and they will follow. That means that they have verbally said that they will comply, but you must observe the actions. And I must caution you that the lower the IQ of the woman, or the more shaky her character is, the harder it is for her to actually live up to what she says. That's not only in the female, that's also in the male. It's very hard for people to change. Tigers don't change their stripes. And then secondly, it's very hard for people to change quickly enough that you might be satisfied with them. Generally, for most people to change, they need to experience something serious, like a, a serious trauma, a serious disappointment, a serious success to drive the behavior. For every psychologist would tell you that the human animal is driven by fear or pain or pleasure, fear, pain, pleasure, but they must be extreme to drive change in behavioral patterns. Tyree writes, peace to the saints, much needed lecture. Oh, indeed, especially because cats are asking me left and right. Oh, hey, quite, I got this little single mom I'm dealing with. You know, how can I? get X, Y, and Z out of her. And most of the time it's like, look, if she's living in reality and she's willing to let you get that beat down or she's paying a P, that's a different thing. But if you're trying to have a relationship with her, that's a bad idea. Or if she's trying to put you through the obstacle course of, you know, you need to earn this. It's like, earn what? Earn what? Your vagina is second rate. Earn what? Like, you can't even give me the proper attention that a, a woman with no children could give me. Earn what? Like, you have less money. Like, I got to pay for more stuff. And I might even have to pay for stuff for your kids. Like, earn what? You have no value. You're like a used car being sold at a new price. Why would I do that? And what you have to know as a man is that you're a lazy man and you're going for the easy layup or what appears to be a layup 
rather than working hard to get the big prize. And here's the funny thing. It is an illusion. You might meet a single woman. She might be shaped the right way, have an attractive face, and even portray herself to have a positive attitude. And the sad reality is, however tempting she may appear to you, uh, probably as, a, as tempting as that apple in the Garden of Eden, she may appear to be attractive to you, but and she might even appear to be an easy layup, but she's not. How easy is it when the single mom says, you know, I like you. I'm interested in you. And you're like, all right, cool. Let's go out this Friday night. She's like, oh, I got to get a babysitter. You're like, okay. Like, let's go out this Saturday night. She's like, okay, well, let me check with the so-and-so's dad and see if he could take him for the weekend because it's really my weekend. I got to switch weekends. And you're like, damn, like this is a lot of stuff going on. You've just embraced so many problems, challenges, and complexity. And the sad reality is that the woman is supposed to bring ease and simplicity. I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat three times a day because a good woman brings the food. You hear me? That's what a good woman does. But what she's doing as a single mother is adding difficulty, simplicity, uh, difficulty and stress to your life unnecessarily. It's damn near a challenge to even get them out on a date. Let them have the babysitter come over watching the kids. You can't even go back to her place to smash. Then you got to maybe take her back to your spot and low key. You don't really want her crazy ass knowing where you live. Right. Or you got to take her to a telly. So you got to come out the pocket just to do that. So it's just adding a lot of things. It's like, why would you want that? And no man who really feels like he has abundance and is firm in his morality and pleased with his life circumstances is going to select a single mother. You know what? A single mother usually is a leftover that you just pick up because it's convenient. But what you should really be doing is selecting. And if you're following the way of the assassin and you're doing your three a days, if it's appropriate for you, meaning you're in a you're single or you're in a relationship where there's an understanding and you're doing your three a days, you would never accept a single mother because you're like, oh, love, you, you got to get to the back of the line. And it's a long line, baby. Go ahead and walk three miles that way and hop your ass in line. I might never get to you. Oh, you did. Mike Saldivar, very consistent, right? Lonely mothers are everywhere. That's correct. This uncomfortable subject needs to be addressed for the saints. Oh, yes, indeed. And the funny thing is that I look at the saints as a different cut of man, a cut above the average. So when the title of this video says that the lonely mother should remain lonely, do I really want the kid to be without a father? Do I really want that woman to be without a protector, a guide, and a leader? No, I don't. But it don't have to be you. You know, she, she should find some guy, some sucker, some beta male, some simp. But it don't have to be you. It could be Will Simp. It could be Homer Simpson, Bart Simpson, but not you. You see, these things are not meant for us. Greater things are meant for us. Now, I'm not giving you a rule that you should stick to doggedly. I'm giving you guidance, a principle that you should generally follow. Now, if the woman's a, a, a widow, that's a different story. You know, her man got body. That's a different story. And I want to also point out the sad uh, degradation of Western society, and in fact, the world, we're spreading our sickness through the instrumentality of TikTok and other means of social media, mass media. You see, it used to be that, say, for example, in America, just the African-American was suffering high rates of illegitimacy, primarily driven by broken government and foolish leftist, leftist policies that drove the father out of the household for the woman could only get the paid compensation for being a single mother if she was, in fact, a single mother, meaning no man in the house. Government policy drove bad behavior in American families and the African-American family being among the poorest as a culture excuse me, as an ethnic group, they were the ones who suffered the most. But what we're seeing is that now with the decay in morality in the greater culture, which would include the white culture, which is the dominant culture in America, just due to numbers, now we see an increase of white single mothers. So Mike is right in that you got single mothers across the board, white, Latino, black, and soon we'll see the Asians suffering the same thing. And that's due to breakdown in culture, which is why a lot of what I do is to build on culture, you dig? Creating global standards and civilization because a lot of folks have forgot. They've gone away from the way that the old heads told you, that the ancestors told you. And I think the ancestors said uh, these hoes ain't loyal. It was either the ancestors or Chris Brown. Somebody said it. But look, the point is that you have to select the right woman and you cannot tolerate to impregnate the wrong woman for you will suffer for a lifetime and let you not be so foolish as to pick up 
the problems and baggage left by another man. Huh? Romario writes, question on PayPal, saying, get the likes up. Oh, indeed. Now, why don't you guys go ahead and bang the like button one time? Oh, it's the least we can do. You know, we see we'll have like 600 people watching live. And it's fine that you don't send intuition. I understand. Sometimes you're in a tight financial situation, but is it not appropriate to hit the like button? Should we as males expect something for nothing? That is not masculine. That is childish and that is feminine. Kenneth writes, peace to the saints. What's your point of view on men who decide to settle down with a single mother? I think it's generally not a good thing. My heart goes out to him. What is the mindset of such a man? It's usually a man who's dealing with lack or a man who could not easily get something else. A man who is performing, a man who is not delivering on his ambition, excuse me, not delivering on his greatness. It's just bad. It's bad. I'm trying to say it nicely. God damn it. It's bad. If you're messing with a single mother, it's bad. And here's the funny thing. And I'm not going to say I've never dealt with a single mother. Check this out. And, and sadly, most of the single mothers are also bad parents, too. <laughs> Go figure. I was dealing with this one single mother back in the day. And she was a terrible mother. And I remember one time she did this. I don't know if I've shared this story before. It's actually comical in retrospect. And I'm going to tell you what I did as a result. So I'm dealing with this single mother. Now, mind you, when you meet them, you never know that they're single mothers half the time. And we'll talk about that, too. But she had wanted to go out for what was portrayed to be a work event. and Maybe it did start as a work event. I don't know. She goes out for a work event. And then the, the work dinner event turns into an evening event. Me, no issue. I'm, I'm going to be here anyways. I'm, my day is wound down. I'm willing to sit here. Your kids sleep. Cool. I'll chill. No worries. And then eventually she comes home completely slizzard. At which point I could clearly observe that, well, if you're this dirt drunk, either your work event was not a work event or you were being unprofessional or you work with a bunch of people who let loose and get a little too loose. But in any case, I don't like it in as much as you're so incompetently drunk right now, or rather I should say you're so drunk, you're incompetent, that if your child needed you at this point, you would be useless to your child. And further, you would even be a danger to your child at this point. And it ain't my kid. It's your kid. You heard me? So, uh, you know, I would just dip up out of here right now. So I went ahead and did the uh, two things. First, I did the center thing. I, I had her get on her knees and I, I uh, treated her mouth like it was a vagina. And then, um, you know, set her aside and left and never came back ever. That was like literally the last time that I saw her, which was the saintly thing to do. The saintly thing to do is to leave. You dig. And that was a, a clear representation of why she was a lonely mother, you see, because she is a harlot. And that's generally how that happens for when a woman makes a man go through the proper road of getting to know her before laying with him and she's really properly assessed who the man is and had her family assess as well she will not end up with a man who would abandon her and the child so what i observed in her behavior is a behavior that i know has existed since she was a child since she was a young person not a child but you know like a teenager and i was recently hearing a moral woman uh, a moral woman I know, uh, we were out in the public and she observed a woman who was inebriated and yelling and just being loud. Now, granted, we're in Las Vegas. This is kind of the place where that happens. But she turned to me, this moral, upright woman, and she said, you know, Marquette, whores are always whores and whores never die, which is to say that that horrific tendency that they have will never go away. You know, this thought was 50 years old and she's still slizzard. She's still yelling, seeking attention. And she still got these breast implants, which look extremely hard and firm with the rest of her skin being slack and loose. It was quite gross. Anyways, I say that to say once a thought, always a thought. <laughs> Aisha writes, I've avoided men with kids, but curious of your opinion on father's dating. I saw it as a turnoff and poor decisions, but I know it can be more complex. 
Aisha, it can be more complex, but similar to the females, it's generally an indication that either A, he's made mistakes, or in the male case, it's a bit more unique because the mistake doesn't weigh on the male's lived day-to-day life as much. So it's a mistake, but still not on the same order of mistake, which is to say that generally when a divorce occurs, the kids go with the mom. And especially if the kids are young, they're going to be with the mother. So the man can really carry on. Would I recommend that one of the lady saints who is you know, young, good looking, can cook, is supportive, is a good listener, is you know, not disagreeable? Would I recommend she go get with a guy who has a kid? No, generally, no. Uh, not to say that joining a family isn't a smart thing. I think it is a, a smart thing to join a family of a man who's demonstrated that he is an upright person and a good manager of women and children. Rob writes, big homie, if you met a woman who makes you millions, thick as hell, cooks and serves you, but she got a kid, would you give her a main position? I would for sure consider it. Absolutely. I would start, I would start thinking. And my encouragement for you all is that you be thinking men. I'm not telling you what to do, but I am giving you guidelines and likelihoods and saying, hey, based on experience and based on a million years worth of game, you know, the knowledge of the ancestors, this is what is likely to happen. This is what you are likely to encounter. But it is not 100% of the truth, but it is 99.9. Hegemonious writes, favorite quote, soon as you wake up, it's hustle mania. You dig? That's from the big homie. Appreciate that. Yes, and let us all carry on that mantra. You know, once you wake up, get on, get up. You know, shout out to James Brown. Get on up, ah, get on the scene. Los Almighty 24 writes, a man will be expected to provide for another man's child when dating a single mother. Absolutely. And in fact, you you even feel awkward and bad if you don't, right? Like when, say, Christmas comes up, it would feel a little ruthless and not quite sit well in your saintly heart to get the woman a gift and not get the child a gift. It just doesn't feel right. And you shouldn't even put yourself in a position like that. And further, when you're dealing with a single mother, uh, guess what? Now you're dealing with that dude, right? Because at some point, you're going to have to encounter him. At some point, there's going to be some interaction. You're like connected to this guy who's a stranger to you. I wouldn't do it. He writes, nothing extra is expected from a woman dating a single father. Ah, fascinating. I wouldn't say that's entirely true. It depends on you know, where that child is positioned in that man's life. You know, I must concede, I do know situations wherein females have come into, you know, people's, um, a man's life and they assume the role of mother and, you know, and they're happy to do so. Ninja's I 21 comes in with tuition. Free game podcast, right? Saying, how can I get a polygamous relationship going? I already have a main woman, but looking for another one. Well, congratulations on that. You have the fundamentals. I actually have, I believe, two videos on patreon.com slash the saint in the center on how to facilitate this process. So I recommend you check it out for you can get the details and practical steps. Markel writes, sometimes I get lost in the eyes of my woman and find appreciation for the genuine kindness in her eyes. I update her on my program and things go well. But she is a single mom and has baggage. She is a good woman. Am I immature? Well, Markel, there may be some context that is relevant for each person may have a unique situation. So if you really want to talk about it, if it's something that's on your heart and you want to know, you know, am I setting myself up for failure, then you can book a consultation at marquetism.com. And sometimes it's worth it because when you're signing up for a lifetime commitment, that's something you ought to maybe talk about, get some advice on, like, you know, you don't want to take a situation like that lightly. And I know many occurrences when a guy's dealing with a single mother says to himself, Says to others, ah, I'm not taking her seriously. You heard me. I'm going to just go ahead and book up, book up, book up, book up, and then carry on. And then next thing you know, book up, book up, book up. But he forgets the carry on part. 
And she has entrapped him with all of the feminine tools that a woman has. And surely women are very clever, in some cases manipulative. A single mother has a lot of experience. And so their whole goal is to hold you down and hold on to you. And it happens. And sometimes you start fooling yourself and you forget what the script was. And all of a sudden you're saying, you know, well, she has all these good qualities. And then I'm like, well, what about when you told me like way back that you weren't going to deal with a single mother? Like what? No. Okay. Well, what happened way back when you said, okay, okay. So she changed your mind. Okay. So it seems like she's leading things now. Now, granted, sometimes you meet a woman who's worth taking the plunge, but it is worth getting some advice and having someone else look over it. It's just like a business plan, right? We're talking about your life plan. You have a business plan. It's worth having someone who has business experience saying, yeah, this don't add up. What about this number right here? Your accountant, this guy's not a good accountant. Your lawyer gave you this contract? No, no, no. You're going to need another one. Or it's not even the right kind of lawyer for that. You need an intellectual property lawyer. Or, whoa, you're trying to do that alone? You need a bookkeeper. It's worth having someone look, a businessman, look over your business plan, even if you too are a businessman. Because consider this, a dentist, an expert in dental work, they can't do dental work on themselves. A neurosurgeon can't do neurosurgery on himself. He'd have to yield to another neurosurgeon to help him out. And so you should at least, you know, have someone take a look. Shout out to little cash kid saying, go ahead, bang that like button. Stop playing, Trey writes. Quay. I noticed none of your videos are monetized. Is this by choice or has YouTube demonetized your channel? You know, from the very beginning, I've not monetized my videos. And I was actually just asked this last night by a young lady. And I shared with her that I don't like watching videos and then the ads interrupt it. It's hard to get the information. And for me, those who really get it is the most important thing is to spread this ism. It'll lead us all to a better world. It's easier to watch the video when you can watch it through. And that's one of the main reasons I don't monetize them in terms of running ads with Google. And that's one of the reasons I, I hope that people like you have the appreciation to respect my time and show thanks and also join this movement you know, of what we're trying to do. So I, of course, appreciate when you send in your super chat. I appreciate those of you who realize the big picture on what we're trying to do within the SAS. And so thank you for acknowledging that. But no, I, I don't enable ads to run on any of the videos and I've never done so since the start of my channel. Morpheus writes, you won't wife a baddie who is a single mom cap, LOL. I like people like this. And the reason that I like people like this is because I know that they will always be my inferior. So it makes me feel very secure in my superiority. The reason I know that they could never be on my level is because their thinking is so primitive. Here's an example. And this is the kind of thinking of average people, average males in the society. This is, this is slave thinking. This is not the thinking of the master. For example, the fool writes, you won't wife a baddie. Now, first off, when you write to me, write in proper English, please. I always encourage you all to do so, especially if English is your mother tongue. Moreover, just the fact that you use the term baddie, I look at you as a fool and a goofball. I actually have a video on patreon.com slash the saint in the center, which is the difference between a good woman and a bad B. The difference between a good woman and a bad B. You see, you are so downtrodden, primitive, and simple-minded that you actually are concerned with the appearance of the female. Let's me know you're a simple person. Me being a man of depth and maturity, I'm concerned with the inside of the woman. Whereas the exterior will fade with time, the inside is what keeps a man, especially a man like me who's intelligent. You ha I have to have something to interact with. I have to have some IQ to have conversation. I have to have a woman who can represent me well. You being a primitive, simple-minded person, and that's reflected in your super chat. That's probably why you're sending two bucks because you're not very well off. And the reason you're probably not well off is because you're thinking is of low quality and the low quality of your thoughts probably lead to low income. But you mustn't stay there. You can get some of this ism and you can rise up. Now, you won't wife a baddie. First off, I'm not interested in baddies. Full stop. I have no true interest in baddies. It has never been an occupation of mine. This is probably because I've 
already experienced them around the world, sometimes in sets of two, you dig. But that's one. I'm not interested in baddies, whether she's a single mother or not. I have no interest. It's not a major pursuit of mine. I like accomplished women. I like intelligent women. I like women who are good earners. I like women who are kind, who are giving. Those are the qualities I seek in a woman. Secondly, single mother, very attractive physically or not, you know, that for me is uh, it's going to take her out the game 99.9% .9 of the time. Now, if she's like the tenth of a percent female, then we can consider it. You know, I'm a businessman. I got to look at the deal. You know, what do the numbers look like? But never would I go in like, oh, you're attractive. I'm going to deal with you. And here's how I can tell that you're not on my level. When you have something in abundance, it has low value to you. So I've dealt with attractive women in abundance. So they have very low value to me. I, I think just yesterday or the day before you saw me with a beauty queen, you know, come on, let's, let's add some of this stuff up. Right? So that's why the beauty of the woman has very little value. I've, I've had them like that since I was a child. I like the full beauty of the woman, the inside's beautiful, the outside's beautiful, the goodness of the woman. And I like to keep things saintly, you dig? So I don't really dive too deep into what I'm doing. I'm here to give you ism. I, and in your case, give you correction, you dig? But thank you for this uh, teachable opportunity. And thank you for having at least a decency to send in your super chat to have your vo voice heard because you know everyone's voice at some level matters and everyone's had a chance to benefit from uh, your errant thinking. So thank you. Markel writes, I've been here longer than I originally anticipated. Also, she's in her late 40s. Dang. Her how uh, her I assume he means owns her own house and has multiple PhDs. Not going to be my first child's mother. I I understand that. And here's the thing. Number one, generally speaking, I don't find that PhDs correlates to the woman being financially solvent. Uh, she's certainly more educated than most women, but I don't think you need a tremendous education to make my breakfast. I don't think you need a tremendous education to know how to interpret my moods. I don't think you need a, a, a PhD to do most of the core things I look for in a woman. Now, if I'm if I need a data scientist for one of my corporations, then yeah, PhD would be appropriate. But in my household, I'm not necessarily looking for that. It's a great value add, but it's not a core thing for me. Um, having her own house, that's good. That adds stability. You know, I'm not, I don't need that. You know, I have my own assets, but that's good. It, it adds. But for me, the that's not the measure for the woman. I'm looking at the traits, but those are all good things. Those are all to the good. And those. I commend you for, you know, having that much. And I bet you, I would bet my life that she prides herself on those things because she's kind of screwed up the most core things. You see uh, a simple woman that is just very feminine and just in tune with like what she's here on this earth for. She's proud first and foremost of her, her husband, her, the choice of man she's been able to secure and proud of her kids and wants to dive into those two areas of life. That's where she derives happiness and meaning and pleasure from and sa safety and stability. You know, your, your PhD ain't gonna hug you at night, you dig. So the women who screw up those basic things, they tend to cling more to their education and their assets. Uh, generally things that are male foci, they cling to those things because they have an absence of those other things. So they have to create a story of why they're in a good position when really they're not. Billy Bob writes, Peace to the Saints, Peace of the Saints. By the way, it's good to see uh, new names. I know, you know some folks maybe might be sending intuition for the first time. Dallas writes, Peace to the Saints, Marquette, you a real one. Appreciate it. Morpheus writes, I'm 22. I want a trophy, right, trophy wife. Now, this is a clear indication that you were not raised right and no, I can't blame you for that. I can only blame your old heads. But when you have the great opportunity to be exposed to meaningful knowledge and you reject it, it is an expression of who you really are. And I am not impressed. You see, when you line up a, a glass of water and it is pure, a wise person who thirsts for knowledge would drink from it. But you, sir, are drinking from toilet water 
and enjoying it. And that is very strange. Not the kind of person I would want to be around. And also the type of individual who wants a trophy wife, you clearly don't get girls because you're overvaluing it. So I know for a fact you don't, you don't get girls. Like I'm sure you don't get girls. <laughs> Black savant rice, this guy paid $2 to get shredded. Well, you know, not only did he get shredded, but he also did a good thing in as much as he gave everyone else an opportunity to learn. And, you know, he might even accept some ism. You know, it is true that sometimes it takes us you know, multiple tries to get something right. And maybe he needs to be slapped in the face with knowledge a couple of times for it to penetrate. Killer Skills 101 writes, I took your advice and took six months to get super fit and wealthy. I re-downloaded Hinge last Friday and averaged 40 likes a day from a two a week I used to get. I know you say to stay off the apps, but I can get samples or just carry on. <laughs> Well, you must live your life according to your own mind, Saint. And it seems as though you're pleased with your progress, so I'm happy for you. Jamal sends intuition. Good to hear from Jamal. Very consistent. Jabrizi writes, bad bees ain't worth it. Trust me, fellas. Trust me, fellas. <laughs> They're usually on the most BS. And I want to verify two things. Number one, the saint gets bad bees. You heard me? Uh, I can attest to this. There have been times we've been out in the world and we caught some females slipping. And I was like, dang, you got the bad or what? No. Like, I'm thinking of two in particular. And they were both nice. They were both nice, but one was just crazy bad. So the saint catches them. I'm going to go ahead and testify. I have seen it in the flesh. And um, he's right. They're 24-7. They're on the most BS. And the only reason that they're on the most BS, you remember that little the young boy who was foolish and he said, I want a trophy wife. You know, he's going to bend over backwards to please that trophy wife. He's going to idealize her and do everything he can to keep her happy so she doesn't leave him. He's going to be a sycophant. And in doing so, he's conditioning her to have a chip on her shoulder. And that's why these bad chicks put up the most BS. But secretly, they yearn for a real man, not a man who would grovel at their feet. And that's why if he does get his trophy wife, she going to get some real man pipe on the late night from the big homie. Right? Carrying on. Error Dim Six comes back yet again. The Australian dollar. Right. Why would I want to start a family with a female who has a kid? I don't know. <laughs> Your first kid will be her second kid. Oh, I like how he put that. Your first kid's her second kid. You know, when you do something the first time, it has so much meaning, right? Like there's a word for having sex the first time. It's called virginity. There's a word for it. It's a special occasion. There's no word for having sex the second time. because It just is what it is at that point. She's like, hey, we didn't been through this. Carrying on. Same thing with the kid. You have that first kid, you're like, wow, this is so special. Like, this is my seed right here. You're like, wow, this is a beautiful moment. And she's just looking at it like, okay, send him next to the other one, carrying on. So, yeah, no, I feel you, bro. Your first kid is her second kid. He right. Do these cats get it? No, they don't. They want a trophy wife. And here, let me tell you how low self-esteem and low IQ these imbeciles are. And it's okay. These are the people you need to work for you as your low-wage employees. You need these dumb people. But let me just explain their stupidity so that you saints are not subject to the same foolish thinking. <sighs> they want a trophy wife. Now, mind you, I'm a minimalist. So when I get trophies, I actually throw them away. I got a lot of plaques, trophies, award certificates. I throw them all away because I have no need to display them. I like my walls bare and blank. I keep my mind free and pure and simple. I don't like distractions in the environment. And what do you have a trophy for? A trophy is to display to others. A trophy is externally facing, which is to say you're doing it to show off to other people. Now, you might say, Mark, quite, you show off a lot. I mean, look at that neck, bruh. Look at the sparkle, sparkle on the neck. You're right. You know, I do got a little bit of sparkle on it. I like the haters sometimes to look at my neck and think, boy, he's winning. That's probably more than I earn in a whole year of working, working my butt off. I kind of appreciate that. I got it 
just to break their hearts. But here's what I'm saying with regards to the trophy wife. You're getting this to appear a certain way to other individuals. That is a low self-esteem position. A trophy wife is a display, whereas a saintly man, an Islamic man, a religious man, a conservative man, a man following most of the religious orthodoxy, whether he's Jewish or otherwise, knows that your woman is not for display. In fact, in many cultures, she is to be covered, concealed, and put in the back which is to say the man, the woman stands behind the man. The man is the shield of the woman and the family. A foolish male who is a feminine male, and you notice women are given to trying to look good for the public because they have variable self-esteem and their self-esteem doesn't go up until you like their photo or give them a compliment. A male who wants a trophy wife is really just a broad. You're a dumb, emotional broad. You want a trophy wife. Why? So you can go out in the public and men can stare at your wife's body. Why? So you can go out in the public and you can have men creating issues. You go to the bathroom, you come back, three, four dudes trying to holler at your female. I've been there. You go out in the public and she's not covered up enough because you want a trophy wife. You want a bad B, which means she's dressed like a slore and then she's barely covering her body. So men want to put their hands on her and talk to her in any kind of way and disrespect her. And you're the crash dummy that I have to stand up to protect this harlot and risk your life and freedom. You're a fool. It's sad out here, but it's OK because we need fools. The saint further writes, she'll be correcting you when you are parenting instead of learning and growing together. I know it's funny, isn't it? (laughs) Saint, I hear you and I feel you. I hear you, I feel you, saint. Justin writes, do you notice when you describe what a good woman is in front of one, they seem to try to convince you that they fit the mold with their words? Oh, yeah. I mean, they turn into lawyers, man. They turn into great debaters. Yes, indeed. And it just shows you how delusional they are. You can even look at them and tell them, hey, I don't drink for a reason. And even though they drink, they'll start telling you how they're going to stop or how they're limiting it or why they drink rather than saying, you know, you're right. I'm not at the level I want to be at. I'm going to start working on that. Full stop. No, they want to use the words trying to manipulate and confuse you. Markel writes, great observation, Mark. Quite crazy how you can see that from so far away. The kids are unruly and the father is weak and mostly absent. Thank you, saints. Yes, those kids are generally unruly. And the funny thing is, if you come into a single mother's life, you will never get to uh, exercise proper discipline in that household, whether it's discipline on that woman and surely not discipline on the child, because she'll never view you as a child's actual father. And let you one time exercise discipline on that child, you know, engage in corporal punishment. Give the kid a spanking. Two-year-old kid, give them a spanking because they don't understand. Then all of a sudden, you have to worry about the guy wanting to give you a spanking. There's just so much involved. It's not necessary. Big Larry writes, peace to the Saints. Marquette, pop it P tonight. Appreciate the game, good sir. It is a pleasure. Jared writes, I've been watching for a while, so I hope you don't mind me super chatting now. But I do hope to meet you in person one day and have a conversation. It can be so. And I appreciate your support, your continued support. Mitchell McCauley, creator of the Jab Journal. Men who chase women become women. Fascinating. Some people in this chat need the conference two footage to understand their priorities. Peace of the saints. That Mitchell, I'm glad you actually mentioned that. And if you're wondering what's in there in the conference two, of course, you have the piece on product development. You know, How do you get your financial base together, which is critically important. But conference two actually has some critical lectures on what is a man. And we talk about the development of a male into a man, which is to say that each stage in life, a man has a different primary identity, whether it's an identity of employee, an identity of boyfriend, an identity of husband, an identity of business owner or community leader. And so I describe the different priorities a man should have as he makes progress through life. I also do the same in describing what a female should prioritize as she goes through the different stages of life and how you evolve together. Most importantly, how a man leads a woman and a family. So thank you very much for sharing that. And that's such a a, a critically important piece of information that I really hope you do look into and live by. You can get that at marquetism.com, that conference two footage that goes through the business side of things, but also most importantly, 
your development as a man and woman. CJ Bailey writes, peace to the Saints, checking in with the big homie. I'll have to catch the replay. Oh, this is a good one, too. I'm, I'm enjoying this one because we're touching on so many critical topics. Killer Skills 101 writes, the ism would have got him the trophies already. You dig? And this is what I also want you guys to understand. If you're a super player, you are the trophy. I repeat, if you're a super player, you are the trophy. And further, let me tell you this. When you're around civilized people, they don't see a trophy wife as a bad B. Civilized people see a trophy wife as a good woman. Uh, civilized people see a trophy wife as a good woman, a good mother. You dig? Things like that. Y'all confused. I didn't finish that one. Killer Skills 101 writes, I can attest to that. Uh, he's failing class. I can attest to that. It already seems like the trophy would morph him into a simp. Oh, he all, he's already a simp. If you're pursuing a, a trophy wife, it's too late for you. You're already a simp. Homie's Bart Simpson. There's no doubt about it. Billy Bob writes, quote, I want a trophy wife, end quote. Send me $500. I got you, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let you rent one. You dig? Yes, indeed. That boy's a, a natural born trick. Baller alert. Lucifer came through via cash app. He writes 100% peace to the saints cook. Fire. Shout out to those who are coming by cash app. We actually, by request of the saints, we put it up there, the cash tag, because as you probably realize by now, the Google Corporation owns YouTube and the Google Corporation suppresses freedom of speech. They stop us from saying certain things. Sometimes you write comments and you think I deleted your comment. I did not delete it. Google held it for review, which is to say they suppressed your ability to say what you really want to say. Yes, indeed. Lawson comes in by a cash app, writes, Peace of the Saints tuition. Onyikachi comes in by a cash app, sends in tuition, writes, Peace to the Saints. Marta Martavian writes, Tuition, grateful for you in the game you spit. Thank you. I appreciate that, Saint. Nicholas comes in by a cash app. He writes, do you think mortgage loan processing is a good move? Yeah, I do. Troy writes, sent you, or excuse me, Troy writes, Peace of the Saints sending tuition for greatest of all times YouTube content. I appreciate that. You, you ain't never lied. Larry comes in by cash app, writes tuition, Peace of the Saints. Sharif comes in by cash app, writes Peace to the Saints. Heels in is back. Sends intuition, same way as always, you dig. I, I definitely appreciate the outpouring of support, whether you're there and for some reason you don't feel the abundance or maybe you actually don't have the abundance. Sometimes you just don't feel like you have abundance and sometimes you might not have abundance. Um, but if you were there and you click the like, I appreciate that. If you, you click the subscribe button and you click the bell to get your notification so that when I go live, you're aware, we appreciate that. You know, when you share the videos, you share the content, you send tuition, it, it is appreciated and it benefits all of us. You know, we live in a better world when we're around men and women who are knowledgeable. We live in a better world when we're around civilized men. Like, for example, I'm not going to stare at your wife. You heard me? Even if she was a bad B, I'm not looking at her. And further, I probably wouldn't look at her anyways because being a bad B doesn't impress me. No way. You did. So civilized men make the world better, more peaceful, more stable. So I just want to thank all of you for being a part of this movement. You dig? And this is real movement. This is not entertainment. AR writes, I think the average weak modern male is the reason women play for the other side and become stiff necked. Also, white women touching down, uh, white woman touching down in a few days. Yeah, I think he's talking about that uh, sweatshirt, the I Identify as a White Woman sweatshirt, which you can get at mdblabel.com along with this hat here. Actually, I think this one is discontinued. We just have three types you can get on mdblabel.com, so you better make a quick move. In fact, a young lady was telling me recently, she's like, oh, I like those joggers you got. She's like, oh, those are great. Are those on the website? I was like, nope, they're discontinued. She was like, you always discontinuing something. I was like, yes, yes, in indeed, indeed. I like exclusivity. I can't lie to you. I cannot lie to you. Would you say? 
Oh, that I identify as a white woman? Oh, thank you. I identify as a white woman is on sasnbrand.com. That's sasnbrand.com. Thank you. That makes sense because MDB label has the very simplistic design. Appreciate it. Well, Saints, I'll give you a little bit of time to send in your last thoughts, questions, comments, and then we will go ahead and wrap up. Also want to acknowledge Marcus, who just purchased the black box on ebook. You can get your copy at marquetism.com. It's a great read, something that will make you laugh, you know, stir your emotions, inspire you, let you know what's possible for you. It reads like a movie. A lot of folks get the black box and they say, bro, I'm not even a reader. I read that joint in five days. It's not even a short book. It's a long book. But that's the kind of engagement that you're going to read it quickly and then you're going to go back to it because the way it's written with so many lessons. I want to acknowledge Romario comes in via PayPal. He writes, great topic, Saint. I have a single mom that is offering me a tremendous value currently. Tremendous, that's a strong word. But I'm not interested in her long term. It gets like that. She is a good woman. However, she is older and the child is a deal breaker. The deal didn't fell apart. When it comes time to serve severed ties, how would you recommend doing so respectfully, if that's even possible, peace of the saints? Well, saint, when that time comes, you have to assess what the continued value of association can be. Sometimes when you reach the terminus of a relationship, there can be no continued value. And if that is the case, you politely state your final words, make clear that the relationship is over and you do not reach out again. And you can respond briefly and politely if she is ever to reach out. If there can be continued value, then you want to step out politely and maintain communication, continue to offer favors and maintain a friendship. Though I would not state that I want to be friends because this kind of language is often used insincerely. So you will just exercise the behavior rather than speaking on it. Thank you for that question. And I know there are many who probably have a similar question. Romario comes right back on PayPal. He writes, addition, in addition to the first question, quote, I definitely took the easy path as I wasn't abundant at the time. It gets like that. I, I know. And the problem is when you take your eye off the ball. And as they say, when it rains, it pours, which is to say problems occur all at once. But here's the thing. Success also occurs in many areas simultaneously. You see, when you're fit in body, you're exercising rigorously, you're going to have a clear mind. A clear mind is going to yield good ideas. You're going to be booming in business. When you feel strong from that strong body, you're also going to be more confident approaching higher numbers of women. And approaching higher numbers of women is going to yield more outcomes with females. So you're going to be successful all at once in many areas of life. So when it rains, it pours. But when the sun shines, it shines on everything. You dig? I like that. Someone quote that. Yes, when it rains, it pours. So yes, comma, when it rains, it pours, period. But, comma, when the sun shines, it shines on everything. I like that. End quote. Marquette Devon Burton. Somebody DM that on Instagram. We just need to collect all of these aphorisms. You see the trouble with the Quran or the Bible, not the trouble with the text, but the trouble with you guys who say you follow it is you don't read it because it's long. You know, you don't read it because there are many chapters and they're written in allegory and metaphor in some cases. And I try to make knowledge simple enough that you can use it in your life today. Romario writes, I definitely took the easy path as I wasn't abundant at the time. I've realized my mistake after watching your videos and now seeking to end it respectfully because all that she has offered. She has been pressing for a serious relationship lately. Oh, yeah, they're going to do that. Believe that. Richard sends in tuition. Oh, no, actually, that's not tuition. That's his shipping cost for his backpack briefcase. You dig. Uh, shout out to the, the ballers who have the backpack briefcase. You know, if you're feeling like a baller and you want to look the part, you dig. Uh, get your backpack briefcase at manandwomanbrand.com. And we'll get that shipped out ASAP. And in fact, it can go out with this one, the set that we're sending out uh, to the great country of the United Kingdom. Want to acknowledge Jerome comes in, writes, Peace to the Saints Tuition by a Cash App. 
Emmanuel comes in by a cash app, writes, Peace of the Saints, thoughts on Elon Musk Twitter takeover. It is not a takeover. He's acquired a majority of shares, which gives him influence. <clears throat> However, we must realize that, especially if you understand corporate structure, those who are on an advisory board or a board of directors, depending on the pre-existing nature of the individuals on the board of any corporation, you may be able to get things done and you may not. So he has voting power. He has significant amounts of shares. He has influence. He has a big name. So that will allow him to do some things. But we also must remember when you have an institution that's rotten throughout, you need cultural change within the institution, which generally comes from rehiring or firing and hiring new personnel. So one man can't break down the censorship machinery within Twitter or Google or any other corporation or even Facebook, because the culture is obviously that of hyper liberalism. It's obvious that the human resources department has hired and hired and hired a lot of individuals who agree with the leftist policy of censorship of truth. And it's ironic because the left often promotes diversity, but one type of diversity they never have is diversity of opinion. And so I think this is what I think Musk did. Now, we'll never know. You'll see some people on YouTube who talk about my business dealings as though they know, as though they were within my private corporation, which they weren't. And because you weren't within my private corporation, it's impossible to know certain things. Similarly, I'm making a speculation here. That is what honest men do. They note when they're making a speculation. I speculate that Elon Musk utilized Twitter to question the company's practices around censorship. When you question Twitter or if you like degrade or deride Twitter or if you degrade or deride a type of cryptocurrency, the price per token will decline. Maybe the price of Twitter stock might decline when you are a big figure and you say something bad about it in the public. Stock price starts to decline. Then you go and gobble up a bunch of stock while that stock price is down in the toilets. You gobble up a bunch of it because you know it's a strong company or you know people have a lot of faith in the company or you think you can do something with it. You gobble up a bunch of stock at a low cost. Then you come out and say, hey, by the way, I bought up a bunch of stock. I'm going to help then the stock price goes back up to where it was before you said your grimy comment. Then maybe with your big name in tech behind the company, and maybe if you have influence in hiring new people, you improve the technology, you reduce the censorship at some level, the company's better, your stock price rises up, and you've been able to accomplish all of that without getting your hands dirty on, as an actual functionary or employee of the corporation. It's a good move. We all know if he wanted to, probably in a matter of a day, he could have created a Twitter competitor. That's a fairly simple, straightforward technology. The, the real issues on the technical side would be with like the load, you know, just ha handling the high amount of usership. But for the most part, the information stored on Twitter is mostly text, which is low weight. Yes, there is media there, but it's not a media-based platform. So it's a pretty straightforward platform. He could have easily built a competitor. Hell, I could build a competitor. And with his name, he could have gotten one off the ground, but he did the simple thing. I think he's going to make a good bag on it. And that's really what he's doing is often making a bag. He's cap uh, cultivating media. He's getting good at it. But the thing is, I think at the end of the day, he doesn't really stand for much. If you've actually done your research on him and understand him as an individual, he basically is a nerd, which is there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. As long as you're actually smart, there is something wrong with being a nerd and you're not smart. He's extremely smart, talented, and highly ambitious. And so he took his intelligence. He used it to amass fortune. He used his fortune to get hair plugs, have his jaw reshaped, get the appearance of the guy he's always wanted to be. Now he has the money. He's gotten the women. Now he's becoming the James Bond figure and he's establishing the political power. And so he's kind of getting all the things he always wanted. And that's a beautiful thing for any man. But what's not driving him is a sense of greater morality and purpose. What's driving him is self-seeking. And that's okay because historically, that's what drives us. That's what drove Julius Caesar. That's what drove Napoleon Bonaparte. That's what drove, you know, fill in the blank with any name. And he's a great man to be respected. But I think those were his, his moves. So I, I gave a meaningful analysis of a situation and a person, and then uh, uh, Peter writes, don't hate. 
Peter, I'll give you one chance to send in a super chat saying something intelligent. Otherwise, you're about to be blocked. I'm giving you a chance here. You know, maybe if you if you have something intelligent to say or you want like to elaborate, I'll give you a chance to express yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be blocked. We don't tolerate stupidity on this side or your emotionalism. Wow, let me catch up with the the real ones real quick. Hey, we're going to pop these super chats up. I just want to make sure that we don't miss anyone. Eddie writes, peace to the saints. Marquette, appreciate you. I seem strange. I think you meant it seems strange when I go out because I'm single at 26 years old. I have a sense of disdain of myself sometimes. I think women view me as goofy with no woman. I think that mostly we are so absorbed, like all of us as human beings, we think people are thinking about us when they're not. <laughs> we, we think that, like, you know, it's that that girl, you're in the club and she doesn't want to dance because she's not a good dancer. I don't want to dance. I'm not a good dancer. Okay. But here's the thing. We're in a club. No one is looking at you. Like, you're not that important that everyone in the club is like, oh, did Sarah start dancing? Let's all look at Sarah. Nah, shorty. Nobody's looking at to your self-conscious and your mind is exaggerating your importance in the world. No one cares if you're dancing. No one's staring at you. No one's speculating on you. And I think that's often the case as human beings. We tend to uh, sometimes think people are thinking about us when they're not. Um, now, granted, in some cases, people are thinking about you constantly. I mean, there's just, there are psychopaths YouTubers that they make more videos about me than I make about anything. They got whole channels dedicated to me. In that case, yes, this person's a psychopath. They're thinking about me constantly. But most of the time, for most of us, is not true that others are thinking about us, which is to say that, no, I don't think women are looking at you thinking poorly of you because you're by yourself or unaccompanied. There are a lot of times I walk around unaccompanied. There's nothing wrong with that. Count D writes, Peace of the Saints, you've significantly changed my life and I'm forever grateful. That means a lot. I really appreciate that. What is the best way for me to handle negative emotions, specifically frustration and anger, would prefer to channel it productively. Well, firstly, you should really think about those emotions for anger is a, a facade. Anger is not a real emotion. Often there's much underneath anger. For example, when I was a young man, every now and then I would think I was angry at my mother, which is to say that I wasn't angry. Mostly, if you go underneath that veneer, I wasn't angry. I was disappointed. I was disappointed that she wasn't what I thought, in some, some instances, what a mother should be. It was disappointment. And when you can go underneath to what's really there, then you can start to understand yourself and you can evaluate, well, should I be feeling this? Like, is, this a, is it reasonable for me to reasonable, meaning you know, based on reason, rationality, is it reasonable for me to be disappointed in my mother for her not being the type of mother I think she should be? Well, no, it's not reasonable to be disappointed in that because she has consistently been this kind of mother for 10 years. And I've consistently for 10 years expected her to be something she clearly is not. So I shouldn't be disappointed. I should actually just accept it. And I should, in fact, be happy because she's exhibited a pattern of behavior patterns and seeing the repetition of her behavior, I can make appropriate adjustments in my reaction and my expectations. And so now I can live a more peaceful life through that rationality. And that deeper thinking will help you find peace. And that's what you should seek. Peace. Peace to the saints. You see, that's why we wish each other peace. That's the greatest thing you can have. And peace can endure. Joy may be fleeting. Simpy McSimperson writes, if only simps have trophy wives, why, excuse me, would you agree that almost any guy with an attractive wife is a simp? That is called specious logic, specious. The word specious means deceptively attractive, seemingly plausible, but fallacious. Fallacious meaning false, untrue. 
So what I'm saying is like what you wrote sounds good, but it ain't quite adding up. It's not logical. So you write, if only simps have tro tro uh, trophy wives. Now, first off, the term trophy wife denotes that the woman is physically attractive, generally speaking. That is what trophy wife means. So let's substitute trophy wife for physically attractive. So, quote, if only simps have physically attractive wives, would you agree that almost any guy with an attractive wife is a simp? So now we've written the sentence a little more clearly for some folks. You said, if only simps have trophy wives. Well, my dear boy, I never said that. So you're starting with what's called a false premise, which in layman's terms means you're making up shit. But I appreciate your, your note. Armel writes, did my first three a day bag three out of five? Peace to the saints. That's number one. Congratulations on your first three a day. I don't know what your age is, but I was doing these joints when I was like 12. You heard me. But point is, no matter what your age is, to do something new, to do a good thing, that's awesome. I'm very happy for you. Your success rate is very high. That is tremendous. Three out of five. That's about 60%. 60% when we're talking about kicking game to females. That's very high. Shout out to you. And I like that you went beyond the three, did five. Beautiful thing. Rex writes, peace of the saints, first time tuition. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And, you know, it, it means a lot when people send a token. You notice I almost never say how much people send because I, I just respect the fact that you are showing up for me. It means a lot. So thank you. And, of course, thank those who are members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, the folks who click the like, click the share, all that good stuff. He writes, got to catch this live from the beginning tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. Many gems here. Dropping seriousism in this lecture. My name is Rick Jume. Hence the name Rex. Ah, I get it. <laughs> I can dig it. Thank you, good sir. You are welcome. Baller alert. I've been shocked to notice the amount of men with wigs on. Oh, man, bro, they got wigs out here. I'm telling you, it, it, it's such a feminine thing. Man. Now, y'all over here in the comments, like, look, Quet, we're going to check on you in 10 years. You're going to be wearing a wig. We're going to pull this clip, pull this clip up and write in the comments, this didn't age well. <laughs> Shout out to the internet nerds. Yeah, cats are out here. It's weird. He writes, I've been shocked to notice the amount of men with wigs on, <laughs> right? They sit right next to a broad in the hair salon getting their extensions in. And jawline reconstruction lately, especially celebrities. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something, isn't it? What are your thoughts? It seems men are going down a similar path as females. Heard Michael B. Jordan had surgery. I've heard the same thing. I don't know if this is the case. Um, but yes, it is certainly feminine. I can have some greater level of understanding for those who are in the public eye, but still, I don't think it's a good example. I don't even think it's appropriate when women are getting all of these piercings, surgeries, tattoos, and all these things, all these augmentations to that which is natural, especially if you consider yourself to be a religious woman. How can you be a Christian or a Muslim or a Jewish woman and then go get your body augmented as though God didn't do it right the first time. As though the hand of man is greater than the work of God. It is clearly against God, a sin, to do such things. So few are actually religious, though they say they are. Why I always uh, refrain from speaking on such matters. But yes, the male today is often behaving like a woman and sadly doesn't even know it half the time. And that's why I don't get involved in the around the kind of men who think and behave in feminine ways. Mitchell M., creator of the Jab Journal, writes, Jabrisi, those who chase women become women. <laughs> when women run society, we become more feminine in nature. True story. Most males chase women, making 80 to 90% of the U.S. population women. <laughs> oh, Mitchell Brush, Nicole gave today, boy. Yes, indeedy. The 
Simpy McSimberson writes, I'm so confused. I believe that. Much of the world is confused. Much of the world is confused, and that is why it's so important for us to spread this message. I appreciate your candor in conceding that. I'd like to acknowledge Emmanuel, who sends in tuition, writes, Peace to the saints, hard times create hard, hard men. Appreciation in cash app. Troy Ryan, homeboy emptied his things for height surgery. Oh, that's a thing? There's a such thing as height surgery? I didn't even know that was that existed. Wow. I think soon we're going to be hearing about penile surgery. Wow. Cats always wanted a last video. Let's go get their surgery again. It's wild out here. Saints, I'll give you as we wind down. Also, side note, uh, if you heard that new track by uh, Pusha T uh, with Jay-Z, uh, just for the record, even though nobody asked me, Jay-Z got bodied on that track. Pusha T went in. Jamal writes, your chessboard was set the moment you were born, meaning you deal with what you were born with. Not a fan of men going under the knife or getting fake hairlines. It's sick out here. Oh, oh indeed. I agree. Alexandra writes, should men take care of kids whose mother pushed the father away when the kids were little and now she's back trying to repent? <sighs> You're asking some real serious, meaningful questions. Now, let's talk on an, a primitive level and then let's talk on a civilized level. We're talking about being civilized. That means you're within a civilization. You're abiding by the norms within the greater community. In civilization, we have certain rules and regulations that protects the community and at some level, the individuals within it. In civilization, we like for men to take care of their own kids so that the kids don't grow up and become dangerous to the civilization. Also, we like men to take take care of their own kids so we don't have to take care of those that are not ours. So that benefits the civilization. We're talking on a primitive level, or well, the primitive basic thing to do as a human animal is for men to indiscriminately impregnate women and not take care of the kids because it's the easiest thing to do. And they've secured that their genetics will survive on into the future. Their name will be continued and their lineage will grow and be plentiful. So on a human animal level, the guy who's dropping a lot of seed at some level as a primitive, he's one. And if he's uh, evaded the financial responsibility of taking care of the kids or even the time, then he's also kind of one on a primitive level, but certainly he would be a outsider in the civilization and probably not be a respected man for the civilization would shun him. So there are those two sides. Would I take the woman back if I had wanted her all along? Sure. But generally when you go away, I don't want you to come back because you probably went away for a reason. And wherever you were, when you were wandering in darkness, whatever filth you have upon you. I don't want you bringing it to me. So I really don't want you after you've come out of that darkness. Now, would I probably want to take care of my kids if they're reasonably healthy and haven't been poisoned beyond repair? Yes, probably so. Thank you for that far-reaching question. Romario writes, appreciate all the consistent game, Marquette. My mindset has changed dramatically since watching your videos. If you're not on Patreon, you wrong. I feel you. I agree. And we got stuff going up all the time. We backlog. We're going to get it up for you. And the folks on Patreon really are the real reason I create content. And they get the best content because they get content that's either full length, uncut, or things that I cannot say 
for the public. And so I appreciate those who appreciate me. And so we make sure that we have a lot of gyms there. And the link is in the description for patreon.com slash the saint and the center. And so I do appreciate all of your support. GG writes, peace to the saints. I've met some girls that were open about being with other men as if it's normal, right? They, it's like they have no shame. Would you consider a Patreon video about signs of when a woman you are seeing has other prospects? You know, I probably wouldn't do a Patreon video about that because the truth is, I don't want you guys, I don't want to orient you on searching for that. Just like a woman shouldn't be constantly accusing you of cheating and infidelity, I don't want to orient you on searching for if this whore is a whore. You know, if she is promiscuous and if she has low qualities, that should be apparent to you. If it's not apparent, appreciate the good things that she is bringing to you and that she is displaying. And when she reveals herself to be a harlot, you should be a wise and rational man who takes very decisive action rapidly. Just like I described earlier in that story, I said, once that female came to me drunk in the middle of the night uh, and she had a kid, like that was the last time I saw her. There was no looking back. There was no texting after that. It was done. I took decisive, uh, swift action. And that's why I encourage you to do. But what I don't encourage you to do is to have worry. I don't encourage you to be consumed with worry and paranoia. You must enjoy your life. Thank you for that question, Saint. Lil Jimmy writes, almost every time I'm done hooking up with a woman, I want my personal space. So I kick them out of my place and they get furious. How can I resolve this issue? Stories. You have to have a good story for her, a story of why she has to leave or a story of why you have to leave. Side note, it's always easier for you to leave her place. So you might be wise to do the hookup at her place so then you can leave. It's easier to kick yourself out. It's a little more polite. Further, uh, please know that the reason they don't want you to leave is because they want the bond and the connection. So it's a good sign, but you have to find a, a better story so that they don't get angry. Thank you for that question. Six writes, baller alert, super chat. Would you agree or disagree that a man should become the best version of himself before dealing with a woman on any serious level? Much love. Okay. Ah, I see. Uh, the saint who put that there, he came in by a cash app. He writes, peace to the saints. I go by six on YouTube. I'll send my question there. And he used the proper formatting, so I appreciate that. And he did send in a baller alert. Would you agree or disagree that a man should become the best version of himself before dealing with a woman on any serious level? No, I don't agree. And even applying this to business, when you're starting a new product or a company, you always want to do things before you're ready. The mantra of the entrepreneur is that you jump out of the airplane and you build the parachute on your way down. Now, you can only build the parachute on your way down if you have the fundamental skills. You have the fundamentals. You have the basics in place. You got a foundation, and that's all you really need. You see, if you were perfect, you jump out of the plane and already have the parachute ready to go. Life is often not like that. You'll never be driving down the road and there's all green lights. So if you are to tell yourself this false narrative and wait until you're near perfect to get a woman, you'll never be worthy of a woman with that mindset. Further, you will not find her in a state of perfection. You two must grow together. So it is wise that you should get started on selecting the right woman and growing together with her. So be mindful of the idea that the male and the female are natural pairs who support one another. And a woman can be a part of your development just as you can be a part of her development. That is why we have a whole brand called www.manandwomanbrandspelledout.com. That natural pairing is powerful. Do not operate as a handicapped person being unto yourself. Thank you for that question. Baller alert. The ballers didn't just pulled up. Where y'all been at? Sajatol Alam. Please forgive me if I've mispronounced that, but I think it's Shazatol Alam. Salam, Saint. I doctor filled this chick via text with the first set of questions via text. 
set up a date to meet up last Sunday. She wanted to reschedule because she had work. I told her we'd make plans to meet <clears throat> after Ramadan. Was this the right move? And let me say, Ramadan Karim, Ramadan Mubarak to all of the Muslims fasting across the world. Uh, please be dedicated. If you're going to do it, do it right. It is, there's so much spiritual growth that can be had during a time like this. Well, number one, congratulations on effectively using the Dr. Phil method. If, it, if it's moved you on to her wanting to go out with you, that's a very good thing. And dating during Ramadan is very difficult. In fact, doing anything during Ramadan is difficult. Even doing business is quite difficult because people are exhausted. They're not really out during the daylight or the business hours. So I understand the challenge of doing anything productive. However, it would be a beautiful thing to start a relationship during the holy month of Ramadan. Firstly, uh, the saint is referring to the Dr. Phil questions, which you can find at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, a list of conversations to engage a woman, also more importantly, to learn about her. So when you set up a date with her, it is disappointing that she should cancel. Generally speaking, people don't cancel things that are a priority for them. So that's a pink flag, shall we say. However, Ramadan, you have people who are fasting, you have a lot of family events, so there's a lot going on in the Ummah. So it can be understandable that that may have caused her to reschedule, or maybe it actually was work. Maybe she's a travel nurse, she's in the medical field, and she had an unexpected schedule. Who knows? I told her we'd make plans to meet after Ramadan. Was this the right move? I tend to not think it was the right move for urgency gets things done. If you have a client who wants to do a deal with you, do the deal today, not tomorrow. Women especially have a lot of emotions. They tend to change their mind. They tend to be uncertain and whimsical. So you really want to push this deal through. It sucks to go back on your word and say, oh, hey, actually, let's not wait until after Ramadan. Let's do this tomorrow or let's do this this weekend. But I think that would be your best opportunity for saving this deal. Remember, gentlemen, haste can be folly, but delay is never wise. The master Sun Tzu. And this is definitely true. Rob writes, peace to the saints. Would you consider a woman who prioritizes a man's looks over all other values a red flag? Yes, absolutely. And she probably has a low IQ. And that just is what it is. And I, I know women like this. And I know women who have chosen me because of looks. They didn't care about any other merit I had. They're like, look, you got the look that I like. What it do? And I know that those women, I have a very limited experience I can have with them. And I know if I were to get in a relationship with them, these are the women you walk around and they're like looking at guys and they're checking out to see who's checking them out. These are the worst women on the planet Earth. He writes, I have a woman who seems to like me just for my looks. Yeah, I say go ahead and smash her and uh, get what you can get and then wait for it to fall apart naturally. And it will fall apart naturally without you even doing anything. Cheddar writes, peace of the saints as always. Appreciate the knowledge. Thank you very much. Peace of the saints. Ahmad Yusuf writes, peace of the saints. Hello, Marquette. I have an excellent idea for an app I would like to pursue and create. Well, that's good to hear. I'm having issues finding app developers. That is often an issue. It's not impossible. He writes, but... Oh, having app developers that can work around my budget. Oh, yeah, well, it depends on the kind of technology. And if you're wise, you might not be, or if you're wise, <clears throat> you'll create what's called a minimal viable product, a feature bear version of the app you're interested in producing, an app that has enough value that people will pay for whatever you're selling, but it's not so sophisticated that it's expensive to develop. He writes, I'm all about quality, but what if I can't afford it? Thanks. Well, in life, the general maxim should be that do the best you can. Yeah, I think you've all heard that before. Uh, what I will tell you is that if you're a non-technical co-founder, then you are certainly in a crippled position. It'll be harder to raise capital. I know this having founded several technology companies. There's even a, a liar on the internet who was brought to my attention who had said that one of the technologies I created from scratch with a development team that was very significant, uh, that we didn't create the technology from scratch, which is silly and is dishonest. And I know the people who watch him create lies, these people do not respect the truth because he's saying things that he couldn't possibly know. 
But anyone who has experience creating corporations or creating mobile applications, of which I have much, um, they know that it is, number one, critical to have good developers. And one thing I just want to give you a side note, if you plan on building this thing up to the million dollar mark, the multi-million dollar mark, the hundreds of million dollar mark, you're going to need outside investment. Venture capital, angel investors, they will not give you money if you're not building your technology from scratch. If you don't have an in-house developer, meaning your own chief technology officer, who's a technical co-founder, someone with a software engineering background who can build it and also manage the code and manage other engineers. So you might want to start using a firm, have them build your MVP, your minimal viable product, shop that around to recruit a technical co-founder and potentially recruit some seed funding or some pre-seed funding or a grant. But my concern for you is that generally when you're a new founder, you don't know what a minimal viable product is, but more importantly, you don't know what a business model is in the technology space. So I highly doubt your business model is any good. You might have a great app idea, but it might not have a strong business model, so it won't go anywhere. I highly recommend you get some professional advice. I'd be happy to talk with you. You can book a consultation at marquetism.com. Um, or if you don't talk to me, talk to someone, but I don't want you to go at this without expertise because know this. When you say your budget, it depends on what you want. And there's so many different ways to budget. For example, if you've ever been in, if you've been in technology for any amount of time, you know that India, they do the cheapest tech work, but they also do the lowest quality tech work. Now, if it's web-based, they generally do a good, good job. If it's mobile, you know, Android, iOS, they're going to do a better job with Android. They're going to do a pretty shoddy job with iOS. If you got a little bit more money to spend, you want to go to Eastern Europe. Ukraine is a great source of development talent. If you have real money and connections, you want to keep your development in-house in the United States or whatever country you're in. That would be ideal. If you have a design, you know, front-end work, you're going to want to hire someone in Eastern Europe. They have much better taste and aesthetic. Thank you for your question, Saint. Okay, looks like uh, we are caught up there. I'm going to check on the want to acknowledge oh this is player one of the saints went on sasnbrand.com got that that dope rugged denim the black denim that says saint and, saint and center on the back in red stitch is cold shout out to cecil you dig yeah, that, that piece is cold. And you know you have something that's stylish. It's not merch. It's just true style. It's good style. Uh, when I wear that that denim piece that says Saint and Center in red, people always say, oh, that's dope, man. Saint and Center. Yeah, where'd you, where'd you get that? <laughs> SASMbrand.com, you dig? And get your gear up. Also, I want to acknowledge Jordan, who got the black box on ebook. You can get a low-cost copy at marquetism.com. If you like to have a paper back in your hand, you can go to Amazon.com and just type in the black box, Marquette Devon Burton, get yourself a copy. And I know that you will enjoy it and it will provide you a lifetime of value. That is what it was written for. And one thing I want to let you guys know is that if someone ever asks me a business question or a question of any type and I don't have the expertise, I'll refer you to someone who does or I'll just tell you. I can't help you. I don't have a, anyone in my network who can, but I think what you're pursuing is valid. You should go get some professional advice. Or I might say, hey, you already have the expertise to get this done. Go get it done. Um, but I really want to guide you to the right place. Me having built many companies, successful products, also having uh, built products and companies that failed. I know it takes a lot of money, a lot of energy, emotion, and effort. And I really want you guys to get the best outcome. I want you to be aware that in technology, it's one of the hardest businesses because if you pick up your cellular phone and you look on here, say you got 50 apps on here, you probably didn't pay for any of them. If you did, at most, you paid for one or two apps, which is to say mobile applications people don't expect to pay for. So you have to figure out a quality business model. Generally, the idea that people are going to use your app and you're going to use the data and monetize the data or monetize the advertising. That only works when you have hundreds of thousands of users or millions of users. If you don't have hundreds of thousands of users, that business model won't work. So you're going to need something more sophisticated. If you've never been in tech, 
you don't have the mind or the experience to think of such a business model, you must get help. Actually, I'm working with some saints right now. We're creating a technology um, and we'll release it to you at some point soon. Our minimal viable product is a phenomenal business model. And the business model was good because I created it because I've created so many apps that I know how this stuff works. And I went through the whole cycle. So I know how it works in terms of the business model. If we need to go raise 3 million bucks, I know how to do that. If we need to deploy it and get sales, I know how to do that. If we need engineers, front end people, like I know all these people personally, I've worked with them. I got the network. So I say that to say, whatever you're doing, get some advice. So it goes smoother and easier. It's smart to invest a thousand dollars now to, inv- uh, to make a million dollars. But what happens if you don't get advice before you try to build a business, building businesses is expensive. So why would you take 30, 40, $50,000 of your own money or your parents' money or your friends and family money? You take $50,000, you don't know what you're doing and you fail and lose all your money when you could have took $1,000 to get good advice so someone could help you structure a real plan or organize a real team so you have a real shot at success. Make sure you have a good shot at whatever you're doing. Take it seriously value yourself, value your time. So just like, you know, the other day we had um, Tiana on who she's been a beauty queen. She now does advising for people who want to win beauty queen pageants, which is to say I've won. I know how to win. I'm going to teach you the shortcuts to accelerate your success. That's what people do in the civilized world. It's the poor among us who are too scared to invest in themselves. And I remember I've had this conversation with my mother so many times because my mother undervalues herself. I always say, mom, invest in yourself. Like you are worthwhile. If you need dental work, don't get the the metal put in your mouth when you can get the white enamel so your teeth look good. And she's like, oh, but it's expensive. I was like, yes, but you are worth it. You are worth investing that money in. And that's what I want you to know. You are worth it. And I don't care what the situation is. Three sins Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself. Sentence number two, be good to good people. Sentence number three, don't be afraid to be good to yourself. Don't be afraid to give yourself a chance to win. Because what I know for sure is unless the human being is regularly practicing the idea and thinking that we are worthwhile, we are excellent, we deserve great things, We're going to screw it up and we're going to self-sabotage every time. Freud, one of the greatest thinkers on the human mind and in psychology, he said human beings have a secret death wish. And it is true, which is we see we're sabotaging ourselves all the time. You've been in situations where you knew you could have done the right thing. You had a test on Monday. Here it is Saturday. You going out to party and you're like, okay, I'm going to buckle down on Sunday. Sunday comes, you're hungover. And you're like, dang, why didn't I, why did I go party? Then you start, you're about to study. Then somebody hits you like, bro, it's going down on Sunday night. You go out and go out again. And then here it is Monday. You got this examination and this test matters. This is one of the courses for your major. This is going to impact your ability to graduate. And you screwed yourself up. And here's the sad thing is that you had every chance to be successful. And there was something in your head that didn't love you. There was something in your own brain where you failed to love yourself. You failed to be good to yourself. Freud is right. We have a secret death wish. And that's why we have to take every effort to condition the mind to love ourself. And that's why I tell you, be good to yourself. And that's why you see me as an example, self-love, self-respect, self-regard. A person who's mentally ill or hates themselves, they'll look at you and call it narcissism. They'll call it arrogance. But what they're really saying is I don't love myself as much as you love yourself. I haven't figured out how to love myself, so I'm going to degrade you for loving yourself because I don't have that which you have, and I wish I had it. I wish I felt about myself the way you feel about yourself. That's what it is. They got all kinds of names for it. But you know what they never named? They never named themselves. They don't want to call themselves what they are, which is someone who doesn't believe in themselves, a loser. They don't want to admit that. And not until you admit what's real can you get to a better place Shout out to all the saints, you dig, who have supported the work, who are trying to better themselves, who hit the like, who share in prosperity. I appreciate you. And we didn't kick some good game tonight. We didn't kick some good game. I think I'm caught up. And anytime I I hear a saint talk about business, I take it seriously because, you know, I've been homeless behind business. I've been in situations where I took all my money and pushed it into my business. 
I know it's a serious thing trying to establish a financial base, especially as a man, because they call you a provider. I'm trying to help you get there. You dig? So I take you seriously. I want you to take yourself seriously. If you need a consultation, you need someone to speak to about business relationships or whatever it is, and you think I have the skills, do yourself the favor. Marquetism.com. You dig? Because I love talking to people who are ambitious and serious. Gigi writes, this is exactly why I laugh when people throw that narcissist card at you. You have taught me to appreciate myself. Thank you. It's ironic, right? It's like they say such strange things and you could tell that there's like a level of mental illness because things don't add up. You see, people say, well, Marquette, or I'm sure they say this about all YouTubers, but they say such silly things like narcissists, which means that I should be interested in myself. But why is it I tell you to be good to yourself before you're even good to me? That don't add up. People will say, you know, this guy's all about the money. Well, why is it I send tens of thousands of dollars to people who follow me every month? And why is it I let you sell your products on my website when I could easily sell the product myself and make all the money? But I let you make the money. Well, that doesn't add up. Those who are wise will always be able to see what I'm doing because if you, you can't watch four of my videos and not see what I'm about. You can't watch four of my videos and not see that there's something deeper here. And more importantly, you can't be among the saints and not see that we have something strong and powerful and it only gets stronger. Saints, it has been truly a pleasure to be here fellowshipping with you. I tell you, I could have done a lot of things tonight and I'm so happy that I did this and had this time to spend with you. It's been an honor. Let us end this the way we always end this, with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints. That was fun.